um, a key to what we are trying to do with um, with with our website, right? It's to, and and with this uh, this talk, we do not call it an interview. We call it a dialogue, because if you look at the the method that's being used when when you look at traditional media, when they turn it into an interview, right, where there's an interviewer asking a lot of questions, being taught or explain something by an expert, by someone that you call, right? The reason they do it like that is they want the viewer to empathize and be the journalist, right? Mm. Because if they feel yeah. that they are the journalist, they will believe what's being told. Exactly, yeah. And, and they ask the questions you want to hear. And, 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 and it's always like that. It's always one-way communication. And it's always either um, dominance porn or it's uh, the schoolmaster situation. Every single time. It's never a dialogue. It's never people sitting uh, relaxed and just talking about things. And, and it's the same when you go to the doctor, when you do, go to a psychologist. When It's always one-way communication. Of course they can be yeah. listening, but then when they talk, they are talking to you as if they're trying to take over your will. Oh, they are. That's exactly what's happening. You're, you're being made submissive. Yes. You're, being, that's, you're being made submissive to the agenda of the, uh, the, the, the overlord in that situation. And you see that this is why journalism, mainstream journalism today, newspaper journalism, is such a toxic, and actually it always has been, a toxic a lifestyle. This is why there's, there's so much alcoholism and drug abuse and all kinds of other problems among like newspaper journalists and media journalists, uh, drug abuse. And, you know, it's, it's because there's something inherently in unhealthy about their approach where they're, 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 they're becoming the representative of the, the listening audience of the readers, the readership, in terms of implementing a sort of a, a false dialogue with the person they're interviewing and that person there carefully choosing their words so they can talk to this sort of representative of the people who by extension have handed over uh, their sympathy to the journalist and that, I can understand why so many journalists and media types and TV people die young it's a horrific lifestyle because they're, they're not they're, they're not being real they're being a fake you know they're being a uh, they're, they're, they're being uh, they're being like the carrier wave, but not the signal inside the carrier wave. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. a radio station broadcast with a carrier wave. The carrier wave is just the frequency, but ultimately it has no energy. It does not deliver a transmission to the end at the speaker, to the viewer. So it's a wasted life. It's a wasted life of a messenger who serves no purpose. And that's why I've often found, I've, I've, like so many mainstream journalists I've known, they've had terrible problems, family problems, uh, alcoholism, all that stuff. And a lot of it, I think, is rooted in the fact that they're ultimately living a toxic, unfulfilling lifestyle where they're all the shit, they're like a pipe, a sewer pipe. All the shit passes through them. And that's the end of it, you know. And that's I think there's a lot when you talk about the whole thing when people all hand over, they are sorry, sympathise with the journalists. They're not really. They're just using. Yeah, they are. They are. But the journalist is getting absolutely not. The interviewer is absolutely getting nothing from it. So what you're doing here is far more healthy. There's a dialogue because you're speaking as much as I am, and from that, from this interaction of unscripted text and unscripted dialogue is where ideas and new possibilities manifest and that's incredibly more healthy. Exactly and, and, and it's funny because my, uh, my co-founder um, commented that uh, in, in the interview uh, there's a lot of uh, pauses where uh, one of us says um, the uh sound right where we're thinking, that's thinking and, yeah. and, and the point is this is authentic. This is real. This is like in real conversation. There is no such thing as a totally scripted thing when you are in real life. It is, it is happening at the moment. That means you cannot prepare. You cannot sit there and decide everything. You need to listen before you speak. 
Yeah, and ultimately the, the people who will listen to this stuff going forward will get much more from what we're doing than they'll get from a pre-scripted interview.